My fellow Amazonians, uh, fellow citizens of our great country, in the past few years of our war of independence, the American administration under President Donald Trump has undertaken a couple of measures that has brought the Amazonian struggle to the limelight. We all know the wordings of the the outgone American ambassador. After meeting Mr. Beer, he walked in front of the cameras and for the first time, a foreign diplomat called the name Ambazonian. Sin Cameron excluded from certain exclusive clubs in terms of trade. We have observed a plethora of activities bipartisan in nature at the U.S. Senate. We have also observed a, a very heavy engagement by the State Department. Mr. Thibault Nagy, though sometimes we have disagreed with the wordings that he has put out there with respect to our war of independence and the aspirations of the Amazonian people, Mr. Thibault Nagy has constantly spoken about our struggle and our plight. Very few top administration officials of different countries have spoken so highly of our resistance. Mr. Thibault Nagy has talked about the impossibility of Cameroon ever defeating Amazonia. He has talked about the necessity for Amazonians to be able to determine their future. The, the Trump administration has taken measures in terms of reducing military cooperation with the Yaoundé uh, regime. We, we, we cannot, I mean, we cannot be silent about these, these steps. And we are definitely very grateful uh, to the Trump administration for all the steps it has taken to make sure that the Amazonian struggle, you know, reaches the point in terms of international diplomacy that it has, it has reached. And we are confident that the new one is gonna, is gonna put it on a different pedestal. I, I wanna thank uh, those at the State Department who have worked under President Trump. I, I wanna thank their creativity, I want to thank Mr. Tibor Nagy for being a visible face. He's met a lot of his he has different governments for his rapprochement 
with, with, with Ambazonians. And it, it is rare for a powerful country to take such uh, with respect to a struggle so far away uh, from them. And so what the Trump administration ha has done requires us applauding them. I, I wanna thank him uh, on behalf of our people for the steps that they have thus far taken. Yesterday we observe all of us, the, the elections, the presidential elections of the United States. Let me also on behalf of our people thank the American people for upholding, you know, their, their civic responsibility for defending it, for massively on, in an unprecedented manner coming out to cast their vote and to make sure every vote counts. Ambazonians, since the occupation of our country, have never had the opportunity to peacefully alter the direction of state affairs with a simple vote. The right to voting has been totally denied our people by the occupying regime. And so what we observe yesterday is something we, we take pride in and we want to cast the Ambazonian uh, 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 state in the image of what we all observed yesterday. There is an incoming administration to be led by Mr. Uh, on behalf of our people, we extend our salutations and our congratulations to Mr. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris for their victory. We, we, we salute their tenacity in the way they conducted themselves uh, during the campaign for being, for being civil, for speaking on behalf of the disenfranchised within the United States and across the globe. We know Mr. Joe Biden comes from a humble beginning. He's a gentleman from a, a, a poor background who rose up to become one of the youngest senators in the United States. In 1972, what will define his career, he lost his wife and kids in a ghastly motor accident. That, that has shaped who Mr. Biden in, in, in a fundamentally positive way where tragedy shaped him to become an individual who spoke for people who are oppressed, spoke for those who are disenfranchised. And whenever he misspoke, he was able to apologize. He has spoken for the Palestinians. He spoke for the South Africans during the period of apartheid. He has represented different communities in their aspirations for racial equality, for racial justice. He has been someone who has advanced the rights of women. We also see in the team, the powerful lady, the first woman, the first black woman to rise to the position of vice president of the United States, shattering what we have always termed the glass ceiling. We, we, we can't be proud enough. And I think as she said yesterday, she has risen to this pedestal on behalf of the Rosa Parks, the Amazonian women who have never had a voice and across the globe who have been segregated, raped, excluded. She stands on behalf of Amazonian women in ITP camps, those who are going through tragedies, those who've lost loved ones. And we want to send our congratulations to Kamala Harris for her election to that to that position. And I know definitely the background of Mr. Biden, the background of Kamala Harris speaks to our own struggle from a humble beginning, from a disenfranchised system rising up 
to the majestic heights of the highest office of the United States of America. The tenacity of Kamala, her role as a prosecutor, in her role as a senator, should inspire Ambazonian women in the Ambazonian struggle for independence. To be able to, to queue up and make sure their, their possibilities are not hampered by the agenda or the attitude of, of men in our, in our war of independence. We have worked with the past administration at different levels. Different Ambazonians have worked tirelessly within the United States to secure bipartisan resolutions that cement our right to external self-determination to decolonize Amazonia. It is my belief, and it should be the belief of every Amazonian, that the new administration will continue to speak and act in a way consistent with the aspirations of the Amazonian people. Our foreign teams, our activists, will make sure we reach out to the appropriate authorities within the new administration to make sure they understand our case, they understand what has been done, and how they can pivot, you know, our struggle in a positive direction. I would also like to talk about briefly the the statement made by the Under Secretary for, for of State of African Affairs, Mr. Tibor Nagui, about the Amazonian diaspora. This is what I like to say, and, and I say this with all due respect and appreciation for Mr. Tibor Nagui for the tremendous contribution he has done to uplift the spirit of the Ambazonian people, his civility in meeting our activists and being able to speak for us and taking all forms of attacks from different countries and individuals across the globe. The Ambazonian diaspora, like most diaspora, look forward to contributing to the Amazonian community, to develop it, to foster political freedoms, to provide opportunities for the millions of Amazonians who have not gotten the opportunity to escape the entrapment that they have been under for more than 59 years. What the world must understand is that there was a push effect. It, was, it wasn't simply a pull effect that got millions of Amazonians out of their home. It was mainly a push effect. The absence of opportunity, political persecution, uh, segregation, and, and political assassinations. I've gotten hundreds of thousands of our people to sought refuge in distant places, and especially the United States. And as I said before, we are definitely very grateful for the hospitality of, of the United States. Uh, Amazonians have had it easier in the United States in seeking and receiving protection from, from persecution in comparative terms. And, and, and so and Amazonians have contributed immensely. We, we, have, we have been sending millions you know, to our communities, to our parents, to families down there. And Amazonians have not been sending this funds simply to, 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 to plaster laughter on the faces of those left behind, but also to bring joy to them, to improve on their lives, to, to strengthen their capabilities in terms of fighting for political change, and to ensure that one day, all of us trapped in the diaspora will return uh, to a homeland. But inversely, our contribution through remittances have not made a fundamental a new system moving our parents out here, despite the, the millions of dollars that Amazonians send in remittances, children still leave school without opportunities of jobs. They are still persecuted. Our roads are impossible, causing the death of thousands of people. We have lack of basic political freedoms, lack of the respect of human dignity. And we've concluded that these remittances should better be reinvested in the right of the Amazonian people to be free. Because it is only through an independent Amazonia would the aspirations of the diaspora in providing opportunities and happiness for the Amazonians at home and to themselves will be 
recognized. Amazonians in the diaspora are not slaves. They are not slaves to those trapped in, in our country. And, and, and to, 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 to situate the Amazonian diaspora in that form is something undermining you know, what, what they are doing. Uh, I, the Amazonian diaspora, like all diasporans, including the Kosovars, which are cited in my last outings, should be supported to dismantle the system of colonialism that uh, have been imposed on them. The Americans moved thousands of Kosovars from the United States, got them trained in Kosovo to fight, you know, the Serbians. The, 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 the Americans have secured for, 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 for the country in northern Iraq a strong autonomy within which they are flourished economically and politically. The United States have shed blood in protecting the curtain in the north of Syria. And they, they, they have spent a lot of money in ensuring that peoples who are entrapped in different places can, can safely secure their freedom so that they can enjoy the, the basic liberties that should be provided and secured by every country. And I think the greatest contribution the Amazonian diaspora can contribute is to end the colonialism of their homeland, lift, you know, uplift our people and give them the unique opportunity one day to return as entrepreneurs to sustain the development of their homeland. As far as the territorial integrity of Cameroon is concerned, that is not in dispute. Cameroon's territorial integrity is protected by the Milner Simon Agreement of 1919, the 1964 uh, Cairo Declaration. You know, those are basic international law principles that ensures that, you know, people cannot simply extend their borders when they want. We are not disputing the territory. There is no dispute in terms of the borders of Cameroon. We will not allow an alien system that encroaches in our land, subject us, you know, to a system that is to to totally, you know, abnormal, cause the death of thousands of our people and, and, and sit back and watch them continue with their carnage. We will continue to work with the, with the present administration to make sure that there is clarity in the historical perspective of our struggle. There is clarity in, uh, on, on our stance. Cameroon has refused to commit to any meaningful discussions that could end its tyranny in our homeland. It has continued on abetted with the system of brutality. And I call on the United States to be more forthright like it did in Kosovo, like it did in Syria, in Kurdistan, and other struggles to make sure the lives of our people are secured. With, with, with respect to what is going on in Ground Zero, my people, I'm, I'm confident. I, I'm confident with what I'm seeing, and I ask you to be confident in, in, in our pathway. Yesterday, I had a, a very important meeting with our community in, in Houston. Very grateful to them to have given me their listening ears and we'll continue this conversation in the background. Next Saturday, I'll be speaking to our community in the United Kingdom and to make sure that we can convey to them our highest assurances of the pathway to our liberation. Cameroon will be vanquished. Cameroon will be bundled out of our country. That's the land of our birth. I want you to be confident. Don't be swayed by the little happenings that are taking place in our homeland. That is the normal trajectory that all struggles have, have taken place. I, I, I am in good spirit. I will, be, I will be out in a few seconds with my press secretary, Mr. Asul Lucas, to talk about the stabilization uh, fund that was launched, the necessity for us to recommit to a war of liberation and be more hopeful in the direction that we have set forth. Thank you very much, Amazonians, for your resilience, for your sacrifices, for your patience on the suffering. The reward of this tenacity will be a homeland within which you will be able to decide your political, economic, and social destiny. God bless you all. God bless Amazonia.